and let's get to the base. First thing I want to do is get two of these pulleys on, and we've got these pulleys. These are 624. Mm -hmm. These are M4 18s. 18s. M4 washers, and these funky little guys. we got to figure this out. These work really well, but um, when I first put these on, they were very tight. So first, I'm going to get it ready by one half put through there, and then this spacer will probably do something different on this, but right now what I've been doing is using the spacer, and I actually need a M3, I mean a three millimeter. This is a pin. I should have just one that slips on here, but I couldn't find it. So I've just been doing this. While I'm at it, I'm going to prep my other pulleys, so I'll have to do this each time. A spacer goes in between these these uh, pull, I mean, um, bearings, because you don't want to squeeze it so hard that it caves in. So that little spacer keeps it from caving in. Where's the third one? Oh, here it is. Two of these are going on this base. One of them is going on the X carriage. Okay, so that goes on like this, then it clamshells, and one of these little M4 washers. I'm going to get on here. These, one really nice thing about do it, uh, designing in metal is, oh, you know what I could use um, to get this tight? One of those L Allen wrenches instead of the ones for the, because I can't get this in here in this part. Anyway, uh, these, these metal parts come to us um, from a local manufacturer and they're powder coated and they have these things called PIM certs in it. So I don't have to hold the, the little nut in there when I put these together. It makes it so nice to assemble because all the PIM certs are the right size and they're in the right place and you, it just is so much easier to assemble. Now the caveat in that is you don't want to over tighten on a PEM cert like I did on one of these because it'll just it'll just push it out because it's actually a little nut that um, thanks it's a little nut that is pressed in there and it it, it help it holds really well but you know you just don't want to overdo it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is the I don't remember I guess it, this is it. I'm gonna do the Y motor, so that's a six or eight. We've been using sixes. Is that a six? No, these are sixes right here. Oh yeah, these are short guys. This is a six. Now, it's funny. I'm used to putting together stuff with laser cut wood, and the wood is thicker. By the way, I've already um, put the pulley on here. It goes on similar to this. It's upside down and for, all the way to the bottom. Um, then you come up. On this particular one, it looks like it's up about an eighth of an inch on the Y motor. But you'll see how it aligns with the two pulleys in here. I'll show you in just a second. Anyway, I'm used to putting bots together for these videos. Actually, I think these, that's what these from, remnant four eights are for. No. No, I'll tell you why. I'm telling the story. Listen! <laughs> Don't interrupt me on camera. So, these... Motors used to go in with uh, M38s on laser cut wood, but this is super thin. And if you go too far into the motor, you'll push out the, the screw on the back. It won't hurt it, but it'll annoy you, and then eventually it'll get loose. So these are sixes. I have a 2.5 here. Oh, this, this is okay for now. These are, this is the only area on the bot that you can't get a screw gun in there really well. I say only, I'm sure there's other areas. Okay, so I got my four M3 six millimeter to put the motor in. 
I've got my two pulleys for the belt. What's great is you got easy access, so when I thread the belt through there, it's going to be easy. I can even thread it through from the back if I want to. So the next thing I'm going to do is these. Uh, these are going to be M6 as well. I mean, I'm sorry, M3, 6 millimeters. That's what these are for. So these are standoffs. Uh, I think eventually we're thinking about having these pressed in as PIM certs. We'll have to look at the cost. But I just hold this little nut back there and insert these four standoffs and they hold the board away from the metal. Were those sixes? Those were, those were eights, I'm sorry. I need sixes. I grabbed the wrong ones. I might have said it right. What did I say? There we go. These little short ones. And truthfully, um, these standoffs would work with longer screws, but we try to save money, even pennies, on choosing the minimum requirement for the screw. Did you know when we start the video? How long have we been recording, did you say? Let's see. 14 minutes. And then we're going to put the printer board on here. And that is going to be... Uh, 6 millimeter as well. As well, yeah. You know which way the printer board orients because the holes in the back are obviously to give access to the USB. So you see this sits right in here. And the SD card and the USB line up with those holes. I like to, on this delicate stuff, um, I don't like to use the screw gun to power in everything. I like to it means that, you know, if I don't remember to go back and tighten, that I may miss tightening something. There's some areas <clears throat> that you may even want to consider Loctite from time to time. I'm trying to think what I would do on this spot in Loctite. I don't know that I would. But I know on like, uh, what is it, the CNC? There was something the other day that I thought, man, we really ought to use Loctite. The simple has some Loctite. Mm -hmm. oh, I know what it is. It's the the pulleys. Yeah. Pulleys, that's always a good one. Area that use Loctite. Okay, printer board's in. Four M3 six millimeter screws. I'll get that prepped for when I'm you want the six ready for that. Uh, let's put the, let's finish this out. Um, I could put the bed on. Let's do that. So I was thinking power adapter. Power adapter. Oh yeah, power, power adapter is great. We'll do that. Let's see, this is going to do this one anyway. All right, so this little power adapter thing. Uh, take the screw or the nut, pull it back, so you can get the wire through. And then it's a little bit. Uh, you kind of got to push a little bit to get it past the wires. And then this should hand tighten. You don't want to thread it wrong, like I'm about to. I need an overhead light in here, you know what I mean? Like for uh, these build videos? Yeah, you could do that. Nothing bright. I mean, nothing like super glaring, but maybe something soft. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in just to when I get to wiring stuff. So this is the Y. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. X, Y. Red's on the right? Yeah. Okay. So that'll stay on my way. Now I might as well, is it the, sh this is the short belt? Or yes. the long belt? Short, short belt. I might as well get, get going on this. So what, what I'm gonna do is just bring it through here. That's okay. It, I'm going to have to mess with this later. Um, but I, that just saves me a lot of trouble if I do that. Okay. All I'm going to do now is uh, attach the carriages. So I'm just going to line up one of the carriages. And these carriages, again, we're going to put in, what are these, six? These carriages you want to be real gentle with. 
So I'm just going to put them in hand tight for now. Unless they fight me and then I'll use the... I guess I could. I can tell. Was this what I used the really short ones on earlier? I can tell they haven't been threaded. Um, oh, you want to go back to fours? I don't know. Let me try. I, I don't think so. Those fours are, those are freaking small, man. We don't, we've never used fours before, have we? For anything? Uh, I think an early simple metal, but not since. We should swap those out. Yeah. All right, let's go with these. Yeah, until. those were the 12 fours, I'm sure. Yeah. No, it went fine. It just hadn't been, you know, it wasn't as loose as four millimeters down. Okay, so 12 M6, M36s for the carriages, all the carriages. There's two carriages on the X as well, so what do we got, five carriages total on this guy? Mm -hmm. And all of them will be using M36 millimeters. This actually really helps having Jeremy here to give me the, the we just tore it down, so we figured why not build it up. But uh, we, it's kind of fresh in our minds what sizes we use on things, and he's got some notes. I don't know this stuff from memory. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a zip tie on this belt. Sometimes when you when we put bots together, uh, we cut the belts kind of short. Your belt will be an inch longer at least. Uh, we always add a little bit so you have room to mess with it in here. I'll just throw that on the floor. All right. So uh, the belt tensioner is actually from our simple, and the PIM certs go towards the inside because you want to have that, um, what length was that? The These? 316s. Is it this one? Looks like it. Let me check it real fast. There you go. So you want, so it's going to come through the back of the bed and into this and when it's pulling tension, yep. you want it to be uh, the backing on that pimser to be, you know, stopping it from pulling through. Otherwise, if you do it backwards, you could pull it out. So you got to be careful how you put those in. Is this the right size? Yes, 16. 16. So it's an M316. <clears throat> and before I tighten this, by the way, the, the uh, teeth on the belt lock together. So when you fold it around, it locks together. So let me zip tight. So I wanted to pull that belt as tight as I could, but still give myself room to uh, give it some tension because the tension on these belts are really important. You want almost like a guitar string. I mean, you want it tight. If it's loose at all, your prints will suffer and your machine will clatter and you know, clang and clatter. It won't be good. Now, sometimes I put that last loop on Expecting I'll be able to reach it with this, and I can't, but let's see. Oh, perfect. Actually, it's a little... Eh, no, that's fine. So I'm just doing this with my fingers. You'd be surprised. You can actually tighten this belt with your fingers, unless you have Jeremy's weak hands. <laughs> uh, pretty tight. 